911. What is the location of your emergency? I'm at the Hartsfield Airport parking lot. My husband had cashed out. He stands up from the car and just spits out the words, something's wrong. Hey, hold on. Let me get airport police on the line. Thomas? Thomas? He took three very loud gasps of air and never breathed again. LA Airport Communication. I need an ambulance in the parking lot, please. My husband has passed out and I can't get him conscious. Okay, where are you? What? D60. D60 where? What parking lot are you in? The Delta side. Let me go ahead and get the ambulance started for you, okay? He's sorry. Said he had a pain in his chest and he has an aortic aneurysm repair. I can't even tell if he's breathing anymore. Yeah, he's gasping for air. Airport Communications to Engine 32, Med 4. Respond to the South Economy parking. For Tom Lawson, husband, father, retired Marine, Atlanta's airport would be his final destination. You have to be blind to not realize that someone is really leaving when they stop breathing. And if you don't get here soon enough, he will never breathe again. You say you have a feeling he just left you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to update them with that information. We'll just hold on until the paramedics get there, okay? I can't find a pulse in his neck. I'll update them with that information. He's gone. He fell down? No. I... Oh, you say he's gone? Yes. Well, the paramedics isn't there. Well, it feels like forever when you're sitting there watching your loved one die in front of you, lying on the ground waiting for help. In the middle of the busiest airport in the world. Had Tom Lawson collapsed here, on this grass airstrip and flowery branch close to his home, then Ruth Lawson would have been given pre-arrival instructions by the 911 operator, including CPR that she could have used to try to save her husband's life while the ambulance was still on the way. That's because every 911 operator and dispatcher here in mostly rural Hall County is trained and authorized to use emergency medical dispatch. Listen carefully, I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep. One, two, two three, four. four. One, two, three, four. Keep pumping. No, he's got a pulse. He's breathing. He's breathing now? He's breathing. He's got a pulse. Instead, at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, this is what Ruth Lawson heard while her husband was dying before her eyes. And how long have you been together? Uh, over 30 years. I'm sorry, I missed your name. My name is Mayoshi. Okay, that's an interesting name. There. <laughs> it is a, it's a Japanese name. Okay. <laughs> I'm not a military brat. Um, and my mom didn't travel. My parents didn't travel. I was supposed to be born a boy, but I was born a female. So my mom had a male name, but she was watching a sitcom. And one of the housewife's name was Mayoshi, and that's how I got her name. Okay. <laughs> And how's your husband doing? I'm trying to find the pulse. Okay, is anyone injured? Again, what a cardiac call sounds like at a 911 center with emergency medical dispatch. Listen carefully, and I'll tell you how to do chest compressions. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Okay, I got it both of them. Okay, pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second and two inches deep. One, two, One, two three. three. Four. He started breathing. One. He is breathing. He started breathing. And at the airport's 911 center without EMD. Are you from here? Not originally, but yes. I know you're trying to make small talk. I'm just being patient. I know. I just want to make sure you remain calm. Do you have any emergency medical dispatchers? Not with our team. Gus Hudson runs the airport's centralized command and control center. We do not do EMD here, he wrote in an internal email after we asked for the airport's list of medically trained 911 dispatchers. Do you give any pre-arrival instructions for medical calls? No, we don't. We rely on our EMS team to give those instructions. We give the call to them. They respond as quickly as possible and provide all the medical advice and the medical services that are needed. But Atlanta Fire and EMS assigned to the airport don't give instructions en route to 911 callers either. They can't do anything to help until they get to the scene. Is 22 minutes a, a good response time from the first 911 call to doing CPR? Well, again, it depends on the factors surrounding the time. Uh, our EMS response tries to get here as quickly as possible, so I couldn't tell you if 22 minutes was a good response time, I could tell you that they responded as quickly and as efficiently as they could. You do have some people who are CPR certified on your staff, right? Uh, we have a lot of people that are CPR certified on the staff. Uh, it was a requirement of the city at one time 
that uh, all city employees get CPR certified. And can they give CPR instructions over the phone? No, they cannot over the phone. They're not trained to provide CPR instructions over the phone. I don't think the 911 operator knew what to do with me. But she did know what to do. The airport 911 operator was an emergency medical dispatcher until six months before Tom Lawson died in the parking lot. She was the emergency medical dispatch manager at Fulton County 911, where she co-authored a comprehensive study confirming the efficacy of medical pre-arrival instructions. She could have helped. She just didn't have the tools. She could not have helped here because we don't have in the EMD program here. So she's not authorized to provide those type of instructions. What she did do was use her training as best as she could to keep Ms. Lawson as calm as possible while EMS was en route. If that 911 operator had said, I want you to do this, this, and this and do CPR, would you have done it? I would have attempted. You do so much good for so many people through your entire lifetime and then the system fails you. It's unacceptable. I can no longer live in the residence that I'm in because of the incident. It's that emptiness, isn't it? Well, the house is too big. It needs a family. Just pulled in uh, with a male passenger, no pulse. They're advising this patient has no pulse. The patient's in cardiac arrest. Day one copy patient is in cardiac arrest. Somebody passed out, he wasn't breathing. Day one radio. Are you showing any CPR in progress? Not at this time. When seconds count. Speed up that fire truck now. Rescue trucks are still minutes away. And then airport 911, Jessica speaking. Yes, where is the paramedics? They are the on, they are on, ma'am, they are on the way. We have someone on the scene. They are on the way. Somebody died. Okay, ma'am, they are coming and yeah. They can. There should be someone there. But at the busiest airport in the nation. He's unconscious. Yes, they're doing compressions on him now. All right, we'll have a EMS to that location. All the 911 center can do is send paramedics and hope a bystander knows CPR. Yeah, I need an ambulance right away. I have a mechanic passed out. He's not breathing at all. We're going to see if one of our guys can give him CPR. We do have a man down. We have CPR in progress by bystanders. Hartsfield Jackson has automated external defibrillators or AEDs throughout the passenger car. On courses. And you go inside and use the AED, it will help possibly get them back their heart beating. What's supposed to happen is if you activate 911, the dispatcher will tell you to get an AED. Hopefully that there's an employee in the area that has been trained in CPR. And in many instances, the passengers are also trained in CPR and they initiate that first shock or CPR. Atlanta Fire Rescue Chief Christopher Collins is the EMS director at the airport. It's on his advice that the airport decided to prevent 911 dispatchers from giving life-saving instructions over the phone. Ideally, you would love to be able to talk somebody through a traumatic event like a cardiac arrest. In this environment, though, it's just a challenge. Do you know how many people have died from cardiac arrest here since 2019? So since 2019, I believe it's been about 45 people that went into uh, cardiac arrest. Uh, seven of those people uh, were uh, brought back, uh, discharged from the hospital. Mrs. Taylor, she, where's the effing ambulance? Tom Lawson was one of the dozens of others who never arrived home. You say you have a feeling he just left you? Yes. Okay. I'm going to update them with that information, but just hold on until the paramedics get there, okay? Ruth Lawson waited 22 minutes for rescuers to start CPR on her husband. Nearly 18 of those minutes were spent on the phone with a medically trained dispatcher who was not allowed to give CPR instructions. Do they expect these things to happen there? I don't know, but they definitely had one and they weren't prepared for it. King County 911, what is the location of your emergency? I'm at the Hartsfield Airport parking lot. Ruth's call was first picked up by Clayton County 911. That center uses emergency medical dispatch. They could have given her pre-arrival instructions like CPR. Hey, hold on, let me get airport please on the line. <laughs> But because Ruth and Tom were at the airport within sight of the terminal, Clayton County transferred her from a 911 center that could give life-saving instructions over the phone Thomas? Thomas? to one that could not. Airport communication. 
Seven different 911 centers answered cell phone calls from the airport. Even though the city of Atlanta owns the airport and it's protected by Atlanta police, fire, and EMS, the airport property is actually in four different cities and two different counties. A passenger jet landing on runway 8 left passes through four different 911 jurisdictions before coming to a stop, touching down in College Park, passing through Atlanta Police 911, then Fulton County 911, before crossing midfield into Hapeville. Even the concourses are split between different jurisdictions. Gate B-22 is College Park 911, while B-24 right next door is Clayton County 911. Having seven different 911 centers answer for the airport presents some challenges, doesn't it? Well, they don't answer for the airport. They transfer calls to the airport. If it's a call that uh, our responders should respond to, then we have the policy that they one button transfer to us and we handle the call from there. Five of those six other 911 centers have access to emergency medical dispatchers. Okay, we're gonna do CPR, okay? You ready? Yeah. One, two. All right, got a little bit. Four, got something. Four. He's opening his eyes. The airport does not. They can only send ambulances and fire trucks. Radio, do you, you have a bike unit? His pulse is really low. They're not in service. Hey, I have a bike unit in service, and I have engine 24 responding. It's going to be an extended ETA because they're coming from out of the territory. Be advised, uh, he's not breathing. We have some people out here trying to start CPR. In many instances, the responding units have to go around the airport, get through the traffic, get through security. Once they get through security and all the rest of that, they have to make it to where the patient is. Are you somebody one delayed by aircraft? They were delayed by aircraft, but they should be there shortly. Last year, the airport's average response time from a dispatcher answering to first unit on scene was 11 minutes and 48 seconds. Show me focus 44 on scene. Will advise when they take contact. With that longer response time that's inherent in an airport environment, why wouldn't emergency medical dispatch or some sort of pre-arrival instruction help save lives? Pre-arrival instruction always do help save lives. In this environment, it creates a challenge. Where's the paramedics? They are on, they are on, they are on, ma'am, they are on the way. We have someone on the scene. Last time, on the last way. time somebody died. The system failed terribly, and they should realize their failure and work diligently to fix it. Breaking news, Atlanta's airport has reversed course after an 11 Alive reveal investigation. Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport hiring emergency medical dispatchers for its 911 call center. Chief Investigator Brendan Keefe uncovered dozens of deaths at the nation's busiest airport in our exclusive investigation. And Brendan, this is a significant shift and it's happened very quickly after your story. Yeah, Cheryl, it's a big deal. Every 911 dispatcher at Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport will be trained to deliver CPR and other medical instructions over the phone, a life-saving system they're currently prohibited from using. Thomas Lawson from Flowery Branch died while he and his wife waited 22 minutes after first calling 911 when he collapsed from an apparent heart attack. Ruth Lawson reached Clayton County 911, which uses emergency medical dispatch, but because they were in the South Economy parking lot, the call was transferred to the airport's 911 center. The dispatcher who answered was medically trained at the airport, having left a job as the EMD manager for Fulton County 911 just six months earlier. But the airport airport doesn't currently use CPR or EMD. Is it nice if they give restitution for something they did, but is it nicer to make sure it never happens to someone again? Is it something you think they ought to have, especially given that's a place where plane crashes can occur and major mass casualty incidents can occur? That there must be some out there that do this, and if we're missing that piece, well, they missed it big time and they have the ability to fix it. That's the widow there. They are fixing it. Ruth Lawson, I talked to her on the phone. She's thrilled to hear this, even though obviously nothing will bring her husband back. She just wants to make sure it doesn't happen to anyone else ever again. The airport has not made any announcement here. We got this all through public records. Just two days after our first investigation aired on 11 Alive, the airport got this quote from the vendor that will install the emergency medical dispatch software and train all 911 dispatchers in EMD. The job postings for new emergency medical dispatchers and supervisors is live right now on the city's website. And our complete investigation, including the 911 calls and accountability interviews with airport officials, is posted right now on 11alive.com. Those are the kind of solutions that will impact people for a lot of years to come, Brendan. Great work. Thank you.
massive heart attack. But it was what she did in the 12 minutes before they got there. My wife called 911, performed CPR. We're going to do CPR, okay? You ready? I woke up eight days later in the hospital. Often starting life-saving steps before the first responders even arrive. You need to get her on her back. You need to do CPR. The operator said he needed to perform CPR right now. The thing is, he doesn't know how. Walked me through it a little bit. I didn't really know where to like put my hand. They just said, Place the heel of your hand on the breastbone in the center of the chest. And saved his grandmother's life. And he was gasping for air. I don't think Andrew would be here today if it wasn't for the actions of Ashley. Dispatcher walked me through CPR because I am not trained. We watch all these 911 TV shows, and on the TV shows, they show 911 operators with cards or computer screens or something giving advice. Ruth Lawson expected 911 dispatchers at the busiest airport in the nation could tell her how to save her husband's life. He's fine. He fell down? No. I... Oh, you say he's gone? Yes. Well, the paramedics isn't there. Thomas Lawson was one of at least 38 people to die from cardiac events at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport since 2019. Yeah. Airport 911. With no CPR instructions from 911. Oh, Lord. Bye bye. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. The number is always the same, but calling 911 doesn't always take you to the same place. Making a life or death call from Atlanta Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, you're likely to reach College Park 911. This is an emergency medical dispatch center, which means they can give you medical instructions, including CPR over the phone. But if you're calling from the airport, they're going to send you back to the airport's own 911 center. And calling 911 from Atlanta's airport, your call could be picked up by the main Atlanta 911 center downtown. Atlanta Police 911 transfer all medical calls to Grady EMS down the block. Grady sends ambulances, but also uses emergency medical dispatch, providing those life-saving pre-arrival instructions for all medical calls in the city of Atlanta, except those at the airport. Atlanta police transfer those calls back to Airport 911. Because calling 911 from Atlanta's airport is always a round trip, and for medical calls, a dead end. Because 911 dispatchers here can't give medical instructions, including CPR, over the phone, and they won't transfer you to a center that could. Airport 911 began researching emergency medical dispatch the day after we filed a records request for the number of employees trained in the life-saving technique. No, we don't. And two days after we aired our first investigation of Thomas Lawson's death, the airport got an estimate from the company that the city has since hired to train all airport 911 call takers as emergency medical dispatchers. Is there a value? in these pre-arrival instructions, does it make a difference? Do they save lives? Absolutely. Absolutely, they do. Michael Nix runs 911 for the state. He's the executive director of Georgia's Emergency Communications Authority. Did you know that the airport didn't have a protocol for medical calls? No, I did not know that. Was it surprising to you when you found out the airport didn't have a protocol for medical calls? It was. Uh, knowing that they were a uh, city department, I was unclear that they would follow anything other than what the city of Atlanta's 911 center does for their uh, transferring of EMD calls to Grady. Internal emails obtained by the reveal show why the airport didn't have this vital training before our investigation. Airport 911 director Gus Hudson wrote, EMD and TCPR are not required by the state of Georgia. Shouldn't there be a protocol to handle medical calls pre-arrival instructions in every 911 center? I think in some way, yes, but it, but leave, again, leaving it up to the local jurisdiction to decide what, what works best for them. Georgia requires 1,500 hours of training and five hours of continuing education every two years for a license to cut hair. To answer life and death calls, okay, is anyone injured? dispatchers need just 40 hours of training. They can answer 911 calls for six full months before getting that certification, and 911 dispatchers never need to take another class for the rest of their lives. The police budget has training built in because there's a mandatory 20-hour training requirement every year for every police officer in the state. But there's no continuing education requirement for 911 operators. And as a result, there isn't a lot of funding, particularly within police department-run 911 centers. That's right. A lot of our uh, municipal 911 centers that are operated by cities are under the police department. And then about a quarter of our 911 centers also fall under the uh, office of the sheriff. 
Right now, only 74 of Georgia's 154 primary 911 centers use TCPR or emergency medical dispatch, though Nick says that covers 80 percent of the state's population. Is there a demand? Is there an interest for this kind of training throughout the state? Yeah, of the uh, 80 or so centers that don't provide uh, emergency medical dispatch, we had uh, almost half of those uh, show some interest in providing a telephone CPR and emergency medical dispatch program. We've set aside over $1.5 million. Each primary uh, 911 center uh, will be able to receive up to $10,000, over 100 courses that they can choose from, including, like I said, telephone CPR, emergency medical dispatch. A bill currently pending in the Georgia General Assembly would require all 911 centers to at least provide CPR instructions over the phone. For now, it's completely voluntary. How can this not be mandatory? How can it not be required? How can it be optional? I have no idea. Maybe it needs to go to a federal level so it goes everywhere and it doesn't discriminate by state, county, or city. Atlanta 911, what's the address of your emergency? Airport. By Atlanta Airport? Yeah, Atlanta Airport. Airport 911. Walking into the terminal, there was a family maybe 50 yards in front of us also walking in. I heard something. It sounded like somebody dropped luggage. And then we watched this woman fall. So I took off running. There is a woman who has fallen and is her North Daly Level 1 airport parking deck. She was non-responsive and wasn't breathing, and so I called 911 while my brother went to go find an AED inside the airport. One was running, one was calling, and I was doing compressions. They were doing chest compressions right now. Midway through the call, I heard my dad say, she's not breathing, I can't find a pulse. You said she is breathing? No, she is not. She is not. Okay, I have one over. We need help as quickly as possible. All right. It kind of felt like you're on your own until someone just happens to show up. Engine 32, medic 4, responding to the north lower level. Outside of door LN1, they're doing CPR on the patient. Did help arrive immediately? No. The heroic bystanders, including this Gwinnett High School CPR instructor, don't know if the woman lived or died because of health privacy laws. But we've discovered that Atlanta Airport's Engine 32 took 7 minutes and 25 seconds to get to the scene after Nathan's call for help. The airport ambulance took nearly 14 minutes. Did you have any idea that there was a firehouse just 500 yards from you? Not even remotely. 500 yards, I mean, you can literally trot across the parking lot if you had to in that situation. Fire Station 32 would have been the closest rescue unit that morning last December. So why didn't Engine 32 and other rescue units get there sooner? Because the firehouse was gone. The airport bulldozed Station 32 a year ago to add passenger gates. The airport will extend Concourse T with five gates. These new gates will help us accommodate more passengers and even more airlines. There were five rescue stations ringing Atlanta's airport. The closest to the domestic terminal, Fire Station 32. With an advanced life support fire engine and an ambulance, it has a drive time of less than one minute to the middle of the terminal gates. But now, Fire Station 32 is gone. The next closest fire station is on the other end of the airfield, Fire Station 24. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than five minutes. That adds four minutes to the total response time. The next closest station is on the south end of the airfield, Fire Station 40. It has a drive time to the middle of the T gates of more than seven minutes. That adds six minutes to the total response time to the domestic terminal from the now closed Fire Station 32. Atlanta's aviation and fire departments both refused to grant us another interview. Instead, the city said the loss of the firehouse is temporary, and in the meantime, they're staging personnel and equipment inside the concourse and along the terminal roadway, and they're confident the airport will not experience any degradation in services. Did you break your leg? Just hours after the airport released that statement, 13, can you check on, uh, a 76-year-old passenger fell in line for the main security 
security checkpoint. It's been about 12 minutes. Yeah, they're notoriously slow. I don't know if she fell over somebody's baggage or what, but it looks like her left hip is dislocated. 39 minutes. I mean, we're still standing by for the ambulance with the uh, stretcher. They ain't anywhere close. Where are they coming from? The injured passenger was forced to sit on the floor in the middle of the main terminal for a full hour with a dislocated hip because there was no ambulance available. So that tells me you only have one ambulance working today? Shut up, too. Still not enough to cover. When you got 65,000 employees, 250,000 passengers coming. Yep. But you already knew that. <laughs> the documented drive time for Medic 1 from the now closed Station 32 would have been 57 seconds. I don't know what their ETA is, but you need to get this lady up off this floor. Instead, it took more than an hour and a half and three tries, ultimately getting an ambulance from another city. We're still waiting on a mass transport. This is, this is the busiest airport in the world. We analyze data from thousands of medical calls at the airport before and after the closure of Station 32. The displaced EMS units are now taking 65% longer. That's an extra 3 minutes and 40 seconds per medical run when every second counts. Airport communications to engine 32, med 4, respond to the south economy parking. Fire station 32 would have been the closest to Thomas Lawson as he lay dying in the south economy lot last November. Engine 32 was sent from farther away and started CPR 22 minutes after his wife Ruth called 911. They were coming to the airport from the airport. And how come they don't know how to get around the airport? The reveal obtained this internal working group report from 2019, warning in advance that the loss of Station 32 would result in much longer response times and urging the airport to build its replacement next to and along with the five new passenger gates. The airport shelved those designs even though they were 100% complete, priced, permitted, and ready to be constructed. The working group considered three alternatives, including not re building the fire station at all, but none of the options included holding off on the demolition of the old fire station until a new one could be built elsewhere. The old fire station was demolished and we will be constructing this beautiful new one to support airport operations. Construction on the replacement for station 32 is slated to begin soon in a different location near the South Economy lot, but it won't be done until the end of 2022, leaving Atlanta's airport without a rescue station near the busy domestic terminal for two and a half years. So why doesn't the airport prioritize ambulances, even making them park behind fire trucks? Because Hartsfield Jackson's operating certificate depends on how quickly fire trucks can get to the runways, not ambulances. The FAA's regulations require all kinds of fire trucks, all kinds of firefighting foam within a distance of the runway but there's no requirement for ambulances close to the terminal. Does that make any sense? It doesn't to me. That makes absolutely zero sense. It seems like there's such a huge oversight. Breaking news. Atlanta's Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport is now renting ambulances. This after the 11 Alive investigative team revealed deadly delays in the airport's EMS response. Our chief investigator is Brendan Keefe. He is getting results, and the key word here, Brendan, is renting. That's right. Half of the airport's fleet of regular EMS ambulances are out of service tonight, stuck in the shop for six months. The busiest airport in the world decided to rent ambulances after we uncovered this video. A 76-year-old woman waiting an hour and 35 minutes for an ambulance after she tripped over luggage at the main security checkpoint. She was forced to wait on the terminal floor with a dislocated hip for a full hour. Atlanta's city council asked the airport's general manager about that incident and a death at the airport that we first exposed. B. Badari says two ambulances are in the shop, but a 90-day retrofit doubled to 180 days. Once we were informed of that, the deputy fire chief airport section started looking for availability of ambulances in the market uh, to, um, to rent. We are currently onboarding two additional ambulances here at the airport. Badari said at least one, if not both, of those rented ambulances should be at the airport by tomorrow. The airport director admitted to council what we first revealed here on 11 Alive, that EMS is, quote, a secondary function of the airport's fire rescue units 
because the FAA requires fire trucks for planes, not ambulances Amazing. for passengers. Hmm. Yeah, just stunning there. Yeah. Brendan, thank you. The nation's busiest airport has its own fleet of four ambulances, actually five, but the fifth ambulance is usually unstaffed and held in reserve for only major incidents. So why is Medic 5 responding to regular medical calls at ATL? Because two of the airport's regular ambulances are gone. We tracked them down here, three states away. Hartsfield Jackson's Medic 1 and Medic 2 surrounded by weeds in the back lot of an Ohio factory. Instead of buying new ambulances, which could have replaced the seven-year-old units the day they were ready, the airport decided to send half its regular EMS fleet for extended rebuilds out of state. I don't know what their ETA is, but you need to get this lady up off this floor. Here's 76-year-old Carol Chapman tripping over another passenger's luggage at the main TSA checkpoint in July. Right now we have a female who dislocated her hip and she's just sitting on the floor waiting for a transport unit. We have since confirmed she actually had a broken femur requiring extensive surgery and treatment costing $176,000. But Chapman was forced to wait 95 minutes before the airport could find her an ambulance from another city. Because the airport's remaining ambulances were on other calls and the rest of the fleet was parked 500 miles away. You know, there's questions circling around our EMS system at the airport. There's been some slow response rates. In August, Atlanta City Council asked Airport General Manager B.B. Adari about the EMS delays we had uncovered. We were told at the time when those two ambulances went into the shop that it will only take 90 days to get it, uh, get it back in service. However, because of the disruption of uh, the supply chain, uh, we were informed that it will take 180 days to get those ambulances back. But the city knew long before the airport sent these ambulances to Ohio, they'd be stuck there for at least six months. The reveal investigators obtained the vendor's quote through open records. In November of last year, Atlanta's fire and rescue department was told that each ambulance would be gone for approximately 240 days. But that's not what the airport told council this summer. We thought if two that we put out of service for um, for retrofit uh, would have been returned to us within 90 days, but that was not the case. Uh, matter of fact, the time was doubled. Right after our reporting on Chapman's ordeal, the airport decided to rent two older ambulances from Alabama, three months after the medic units were sent out of state. Both rented ambulances failed their initial inspections by Georgia's Department of public health. The temporary replacement for Medic 1 is 19 years old. The rented Medic 2 is 15 years old and sat unused for a full month outside the airport shop because of multiple issues, including a broken door latch and the wrong color emergency lights. Both Alabama units eventually passed reinspection and are now making medical runs at Atlanta's airport. Yeah, that is not satisfactory for people to have to wait 95 minutes for an emergency response at the world's busiest airport. Uh, we should have, you know, world class, best in class uh, response time and also apparatus, you know, a dozen year old uh, piece of equipment is not what I would call ideal. We have the resources at the airport and we should be spending them to be able to provide the best care that we can. So um, I'll make sure I address this with uh, our general manager immediately. You're going to address it as chair of the committee. What about when you become mayor, when it comes to faster response times and reliable ambulance coverage at the airport? Is this going to be on the priority list? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is uh, the same thing that we're talking about is about making sure we have adequate uh, response response time and, and actually beyond adequate because of this is the airport that we have so many passengers coming through and, and Atlantans going through on the other side because so many connections happen here. I think we do need to make sure that we are uh, better in, in, in responding and um, I'll see to it when I'm mayor and actually I'm going to see to it right now. here for your son's wedding. Yes. And his father's not going to be there. Dad's not here and you can't fill that spot. 
ever. Ruth Lawson returned to Atlanta after moving away, flying into the same airport where she watched her husband Thomas die from a heart attack while waiting 22 minutes for paramedics to show up and start CPR. Sitting on the airplane, I was lucky enough to have an empty seat. And then I went, I have an empty seat. There's supposed to be somebody sitting here. Thomas. That seat will be empty forever, even if there's another body in it. It's not the one who's supposed to be there. All the ambulances were still at the airport last November, but the closest rescue station had already been bulldozed to make way for five new passenger gates. That was Fire Station 32, right there. But it was demolished by the time you called 911. You were just on the other side of this parking garage. Yep. The new Fire Station 32 is under construction right now and right next to the very same South Economy lot where Thomas Lawson took his last breath. The new fire station won't be opened until the end of next year, nearly two years too late to save Thomas Lawson's life. What questions would you like the airport to answer that they're not answering right now to us on the record? Why the hell did you leave me sitting out there with no help for so long watching him die? How do you feel about it? If it was your loved one, you were sitting there, what would you have done? No, you still left me with someone who had already passed away on the ground just to stand there and stare at him with 911 in my ear having chatter conversation. The team that responded to that 911 call uh, got disoriented and took an extra, uh, took extra or long time to reach that patient, uh, to make patient contact. So it was not about the location of our station or where they were reporting from. It's just purely and simply they got lost. The general manager of this airport said that the ambulance got lost trying to find you and your husband. I just thought they missed the entrance to get lost. Just put salt in the wound. And report any unattended baggage. There's a new arrival at the terminal, ladder trucks. Since we started asking questions, the airport has begun staging emergency vehicles with EMTs just outside the main doors for hours at a time. By having rescuers sit in their vehicles instead of a distant firehouse, the average medic unit response time has dropped below eight minutes for the first time in two years. And the airport has shaved 40 seconds off the average overall EMS response time since our first story aired. Because of the incident in the parking lot, we are moving forward to hire an entire cadre of dispatcher who are certified to do emergency medical dispatching. Every 911 dispatcher here could not give CPR instructions and now they can. Now all of them will be trained to give pre-arrival instructions. That has got to give you some solace. It's too late for me. All of those anonymous faces you just passed in the airport are safer because of what you helped uncover. I keep my fingers crossed the system works.